Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Welcome back to the second lecture for Chapter 6. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the behavior near a hyperbolic saddle point for a nonlinear ordinary differential equation autonomous in two dimensions, and that's going to allow us to introduce the notion of stable and unstable manifolds of hyperbolic equilibria. Okay, remember, we have a two-dimensional CR, R greater than 1 vector field, in um, that's autonomous. The coordinates are x and y, and we're going to consider the final case where the x naught y naught is an equilibrium point that is a hyperbolic saddle point. So it has two eigenvalues that are purely real and of opposite sign. And this is the Jacobian of the vector field, and that's what we compute the eigenvalues of to give us, to allow us to make this conclusion. So, the source in the sink, I didn't really prove anything. I'm going to go a little bit further with the saddle. But in order to make sense of it, I need some setup. So, remember, we can take an equilibrium point and we can tailor expand the vector field about that equilibrium point. And that's what we've done here. So we have the linear and the nonlinear parts. Now, we've changed the coordinates from x, y to the c, eta. Why did we do that? Because the I'm writing the Jacobian in diagonal form. And in general, Jacobians do not come to us in diagonal form. But when the eigenvalues are real and distinct, such as they are in this case, we know we can find two eigenvectors and diagonalize the uh, Jacobian. And so taking that linear transformation that uh, is constructed from the two eigenvectors, and we saw that in several examples in the last chapter, we go from the x, y to the c, eta coordinates. And in that sense, that mixes up the x's and y's and the, and the f's and g's, and that's why we don't write the f and the g, we write instead u and v for the new nonlinear terms. So there's a lot going on here. It would be a bit tedious for me to write it all out. It's important, but I think you all have the uh, knowledge to think about it and know exactly what I've done to get to equation 6.2. So the Jacobian at the origin, the origin is now the new equilibrium point for 6.2, is given by this expression, alpha and beta are positive, and so this reflects the hyperbolic nature of the saddle point and the hyperbolic saddle point nature of the equilibrium. So the linearized vector field is given by 6.4, and we see that the C axis, the horizontal axis, is the stable subspace, an invariant subspace. It is a subspace, and the vertical axis, the eta axis, is the unstable invariant subspace. Now, those are the coordinates now for the linearized problem. They're, they're the coordinates, the, sorry, they're the coordinates that we're describing this new system in. So that's, that's going to be very useful for us, the coordinate axes. That's going to be very useful for us. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to, we want to describe the behavior in a neighborhood of the origin, the saddle point. So we need an explicit expression for the neighborhood. So we're going to make a small interval about the origin along the horizontal axis, a small interval about the origin on the vertical axis, take the Cartesian products, and that's going to give us a little box and on the next page, I show you a picture of that box. You can see eta coordinates. Forget about the curves, that's coming. And we see that the horizontal axis is actually the stable subspace. The vertical axis is the unstable subspace. All right, now, the stable 
and the unstable manifold manifold come back to that here I'm for autonomous vector fields and I'm going to correct that little typo there not a little typo but uh, is the following which I'm going to state so there exists a C we're going to talk about the uh, stable manifold manifold just means curve in this two-dimensional setting or surface in a higher dimensional setting it's more general than that but for all intents and purposes that's that um, is what we mean by manifolds in this course we're going to realize them explicitly there's a couple of little wrinkles that come up but don't worry about it manifold surface lower dimensional curve two dimensions curve all right so there exists a CR curve. CR is important because that's the same degree of differentiability as the vector field. It's the graph of a function of the C variables, a graph over the stable subspace. Eta equals S of C. So it has three properties, very important. Actually, a fourth property I'll state afterwards. It passes through the origin. So S of 0 equals 0. It's tangent to the stable subspace at the origin. So its derivative at the origin is vanishes. And it's locally invariant. This is a new term. In the sense that any trajectory starting on this curve stays on the curve and approaches the curve, the origin, at, a, at an exponential rate as t goes to infinity and it leaves the box as t goes to minus infinity that's the locally invariant part the curve is finite and it can leave the curve but only by passing through the boundary of the curve and this curve is unique so in the sense that any other curve satisfying these three properties would have to be the same curve all right, and we refer to this as the local stable manifold of the origin, LOC, at the bottom. And writing out in detail what this it is, and this is exactly in mathematical terminology what I just stated. Now there's another curve, CR curve. C equals U of eta, a graph over the unstable subspace. It passes through the origin. It's tangent to the stable, so the unstable subspace at the origin. And it's locally invariant in the sense that any trajectory starting on the curve starts on the curve and approaches the origin, stays on the curve and approaches the origin at an exponential rate as t goes to minus infinity and it leaves the box as t goes to in plus infinity. And we refer to this as the local unstable manifold and that's what these curves are now if you look at these curves and think about the conditions passing through the origin tangent to the uh, respective stable and unstable subspaces at the origin and uh, it can it's it's locally invariant you can leave in the appropriate direction of time but you have to leave by crossing out the box through the curve. Now, where does that curve go? Well, this is where we get to the notion of the stable and unstable manifolds of the origin, or the global unstable manifolds of the origin. For the stable manifold, we take the little local piece that we've constructed, and we let it flow. We ask where it came from, and that will be all the points that go into the box, the stable manifold of the box. And similarly for the unstable manifold, we let it evolve out of the box in forward time. So where does it go? And if we evolve it backward in time, it comes into the box. Now, there's a lot of interesting things to explore with these uh, symbols, but we'll do some of them in the exercise. Uh, exercises and 
first we want to then consider a number of examples, and that's what is going to make up the rest of this chapter. So this is a good place to stop. A number of things to think about in this example, and or this discussion, and we'll pick it all up with examples in the next lecture. So bye for now.